People still remember, I mean, it's been 40 years, but they still remember the Dukes of Hazard yeah. as a wonderful, fun family yeah. show. The Dukes of Hazard, a television sensation from the late 1970s to mid-1980s, painted an enthralling picture of Southern charm, car chases, and familial bonds. With its heady mix of action, humor, and drama, it rapidly became a cornerstone of American popular culture. Amidst its array of colorful characters and riveting storylines, one aspect stood out prominently, Daisy Duke's iconic shorts, which became a fashion statement in their own right. This video delves into the fascinating journey of the show, with a special emphasis on Daisy Duke's wardrobe malfunction and the cultural ripple it created in the vast ocean of entertainment, background, and success of the Dukes of Hazard. In the annals of television history, few shows have managed to capture the spirit of an era quite like the Dukes of Hazard. Conceived by the minds of Guy Waldron and ex-moonshiner Jerry Rushing, the show was an imaginative dive into the world of southern antics, moonshining, and audacious car chases. Airing its first episode in January 1979, the show spanned an impressive seven seasons, concluding its run in February 1985 after a commendable 147 episodes. What started as an experimental venture for CBS soon turned into an unexpected triumph. The story of the Duke brothers, Bo and Luke, and their escapades in the fictional Hazard County, Georgia, resonated deeply with viewers. Their thrilling adventures, often involving narrow escapes from the clutches of the villainous Boss Hog in their iconic car, the General Lee, provided weekly doses of adrenaline to the eager audience. And of course, the captivating presence of Daisy Duke added a unique flavor, making it a household name across the country. While the initial perception was that the show would serve as a mere fill-in for the gap left by the unsuccessful Captain America series, the Dukes of Hazard quickly defied all expectations. William Paley, the chairman of CBS at the time, had dismissed the show as lousy, a judgment that would soon be proven wrong. By the peak of its popularity, the show was attracting an astonishing 46 million viewers per episode. Such numbers were not merely a testament to its entertainment value, but also its ability to tap into the zeitgeist of the times. The influence of the Dukes of Hazard on popular culture was undeniable. It was not just a TV show. It was a phenomenon. The characters, their catchphrases, and even the merchandise became part of the American lexicon. The adventures of the Duke family were not confined to the television screen. They permeated everyday life. Children sported Dukes of Hazard lunchboxes, played with General Lee toy cars, and aspired to the daring and carefree spirit embodied by the show. Daisy Duke's shorts, colloquially termed Daisy Dukes, became a fashion statement, symbolizing a blend of Southern charm and bold femininity. This sartorial trend was not just limited to the viewers of the show, it became a nationwide sensation, with countless women adopting the style. Similarly, the iconic orange car, the General Lee, with its Confederate flag and audacious jumps, became emblematic of the show's rebellious spirit. Beyond mere merchandise and fashion trends, the show's influence was evident in the way it reshaped the portrayal of the American South in popular media. While it did rely on certain stereotypes, it also celebrated the values of family, loyalty, and resistance to unjust authority. The characters of Hazard County represented a vision of the South that was both endearing and heroic, moving away from some of the more negative portrayals of the era. In retrospect, the success of the Dukes of Hazard can be attributed to its unique blend of action, humor, familial bonds, and importantly, its ability to resonate with the cultural mood of the era. The show was a testament to the power of storytelling and its ability to capture the imagination of a generation. Through its episodes, characters, and undeniable influence, the Dukes of Hazard etched itself into the annals of television history, serving as a vivid reminder of a time when the lines between fiction and reality, TV show and cultural movement, were wonderfully blurred. The iconic characters, Bo, Luke, and Daisy Duke. The heart and soul of the Dukes of Hazard lie in its unforgettable characters, each bringing a distinct charm and dynamism to the narrative. Central to this ensemble were the Duke brothers, Bo and Luke, and their spirited cousin, Daisy Duke. 
Bo and Luke Duke, the good old boys from the fictional Hazard County in Georgia, were the epitome of Southern gallantry, blended with just the right amount of mischief. Their audacious antics, often involving outsmarting the corrupt boss hog and his bumbling sidekick, Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane, formed the crux of many episodes. The brothers, in their iconic General Lee, became symbols of resilience and resistance against oppressive authority. Their camaraderie and unwavering loyalty to family and friends made them beloved figures, not just in Hazard County, but in living rooms across America. Yet, amidst the car chases, narrow escapes, and comedic run-ins with the law, it was Daisy Duke who often stole the spotlight. Daisy was not just a supporting character, she was a force to be reckoned with. Independent, smart, and unapologetically herself, Daisy represented a new kind of Southern belle, one who could hold her own in a world dominated by men. Her role in the series was multifaceted. She was the emotional anchor of the Duke family, offering counsel and comfort in tough times. At the same time, she was no damsel in distress. Daisy often found herself right in the thick of the action, outwitting foes and driving her Jeep, affectionately named Dixie, with as much flair as her male counterparts. Daisy's influence transcended the narrative confines of the show. Her outfit, a pair of scandalously short denim shorts, a tight t-shirt, and cowboy boots, became as iconic as the character herself. While the producers initially envisioned her character to resemble the legendary Dolly Parton, complete with glitzy turtlenecks, go-go boots, and a signature blonde wig, Catherine Bach, who portrayed Daisy, had other ideas. Drawing inspiration from her personal wardrobe, Bach introduced the world to those barely-there shorts, which would later be popularly known as Daisy Dukes. This outfit not only emphasized her fierce independence, but also became a symbol of bold femininity. The shorts were more than just a fashion statement. They represented a break from traditional expectations and an embrace of modern, empowered womanhood. The resemblance to Dolly Parton, albeit not in attire, was more in spirit. Like Parton, Daisy Duke was a blend of beauty, brains, and bravery. She had the charm to light up a room and the grit to stand her ground. This amalgamation of traditional Southern grace with a contemporary empowered outlook made Daisy a character ahead of her times. Her influence was such that decades later, her name still evokes images of strong, confident women unafraid to embrace their identity. Moreover, Daisy's character also subtly challenged the stereotypes associated with Southern women. She was neither the submissive maiden nor the over-the-top caricature. Instead, she was a layered individual with dreams, aspirations, and a heart full of love for her family. This nuanced portrayal added depth to the show, making it more than just a weekly dose of car chases and comedic escapades. In the world of the Dukes of Hazard. While Bo and Luke were the action heroes, it was Daisy who provided the emotional depth and cultural resonance. Together, the trio represented the essence of the American South, a land of tradition and change, of honor and rebellion, of family ties and individual aspirations. In retrospect, the characters of Bo, Luke, and especially Daisy Duke are not just memorable elements of a beloved television show, they are cultural icons, each representing facets of the American spirit. Through their adventures and interactions, they told stories of love, loyalty, resistance, and change. Stories that still resonate with audiences today, making The Dukes of Hazard a timeless classic in the world of entertainment. The General Lee, a non-human star. Within the vibrant tapestry of The Dukes of Hazard, one character stood out without uttering a single line or showcasing any emotion. It was the 1969 Dodge Charger, affectionately and reverently called the General Lee. This orange beast, with its roaring engine, iconic horn, and audacious jumps, became an inseparable part of the series' identity, often overshadowing its human counterparts in terms of sheer spectacle and memorability. The significance of the General Lee to the series cannot be overstated. While Bo and Luke provided the heart and Daisy added the soul, the General Lee was the adrenaline, the pulse, that kept the show racing forward. Its gravity-defying leaps, daredevil chases, and narrow escapes from the clutches of the law were the visual spectacles that kept audiences glued to their screens. Every time its doors were welded shut, forcing the Duke brothers to slide through the windows, or its horn played the first few notes of Dixie, 
It evoked a sense of excitement, anticipation, and pure, unadulterated joy. However, with its fame came a share of controversies. Adorning the roof of the General Lee was the Confederate flag, a symbol deeply embedded in the history of the American South, but also a representation of a divisive past. While for many viewers, especially during the show's original run, the flag symbolized Southern pride and heritage. For others, it was a painful reminder of racial segregation and oppression. As the years passed and the socio-political climate evolved, the presence of the Confederate flag on the General Lee became a point of contention, leading to debates about its appropriateness and the intentions behind its inclusion. By 2015, the weight of this controversy led Warner Brothers to place a ban on the production of toys and merchandise showcasing the Confederate flag. The decision reflected a broader societal shift, acknowledging the painful histories and injustices associated with the symbol. While the General Lee remained an icon, it was now a more complex one, emblematic of both the fun-loving spirit of the show and the challenging histories of the South. Yet, controversies aside, the love for the General Lee was undeniable. This was most evident in the sheer volume of fan mail the car received. Astonishingly, the General Lee garnered over 35,000 pieces of fan mail per month, surpassing any human member of the cast. This outpouring of affection wasn't just about the car's aesthetics or its thrilling stunts. It was about what the car represented, a spirit of freedom, rebellion, and unyielding loyalty to family and friends. For many, the General Lee was more than just a car. It was a symbol of resistance against unjust authority, a beacon of hope in the face of adversity. The relationship between fans and the General Lee was a testament to the show's ability to breathe life into inanimate objects, making them as crucial to the narrative as any human character. Through its growls, roars, and leaps, the car communicated a range of emotions, from excitement and joy to tension and anticipation. In the grand narrative of the Dukes of Hazard, while the Duke family's adventures formed the core, the General Lee's presence added a layer of thrill and spectacle. It was a testament to the show's brilliance that a non-human entity could evoke such profound emotions and loyalty from viewers. Despite its controversies, the General Lee remains one of the most iconic cars in television history, embodying the spirit of the Dukes of Hazard and leaving an indelible mark on the hearts and minds of fans worldwide. The Wardrobe Choices and Malfunction in the realm of television, few wardrobe choices have managed to capture the audience's imagination and leave an everlasting imprint on popular culture, like Daisy Duke's iconic shorts in The Dukes of Hazard. These shorts, a blend of audacity and style, became emblematic of a generation's fashion choices and symbolized a shift in the portrayal of femininity on screen. Initially, the vision for Daisy Duke's character was significantly different from what audiences eventually witnessed. Producers were aiming for a semblance to the legendary Dolly Parton, envisioning Daisy as an aspiring country singer draped in glitzy turtlenecks, flamboyant go-go boots, and crowned with a larger-than-life blonde wig. The intent was to capture the essence of the country music icon, blending her charm and vivacity into the character of Daisy. However, Catherine Bach, the talented actress behind Daisy Duke, brought her unique interpretation to the table. Drawing from her personal wardrobe, she introduced a fresh look that was both daring and captivating. The shorts, paired with a tight t-shirt and cowboy boots, not only highlighted her character's fierce independence, but also set a new benchmark for on-screen fashion. However, with bold fashion, choices come challenges. The length of Daisy's shorts, while trendsetting, raised concerns about potential wardrobe malfunctions. The network was wary of any inadvertent slips or exposures, given the short's revealing nature. To circumvent this, a simple yet effective solution was devised. Catherine Bach was advised to wear skin-toned pantyhose beneath her shorts. This ensured that even if there were any accidental slips, they would be effectively camouflaged, allowing Daisy to continue her on-screen escapades without a hitch. This pragmatic solution not only preserved the character's iconic look, but also ensured that the show maintained its family-friendly appeal. The impact of Daisy Duke's shorts was far-reaching, so much so that they soon earned their moniker, Daisy Dukes, becoming synonymous with any pair of denim shorts cut above the mid-thigh. 
This was not just a fleeting fashion trend. The Daisy Dukes became a cultural phenomenon, symbolizing a new age of bold femininity and self-expression. Women across the nation, inspired by Daisy's confidence and style, embraced these shorts, making them a staple of summer wardrobes. Beyond fashion, they represented a break from traditional conservative attire, signaling a move towards more liberated and individualistic sartorial choices. The legacy of the Daisy Dukes was solidified when they earned a place of honor at the Smithsonian Institution. Displayed alongside iconic props like Indiana Jones's whip and hat and Dorothy's ruby slippers from The Wizard of Oz, Daisy's shorts were recognized not merely as a piece of clothing, but as a significant artifact of American entertainment history. This recognition was a testament to their cultural impact and their role in reshaping perceptions of femininity and fashion. In the annals of television history, while many characters and their outfits are remembered, few manage to transcend the medium and influence broader societal trends. Daisy Duke's shorts achieved this rare distinction, turning a simple wardrobe choice into a symbol of empowerment, confidence, and style. Their journey, from a potential wardrobe malfunction to an enduring legacy, is a testament to the power of television to shape cultural narratives and redefine societal norms. Through Daisy and her iconic shorts, the Dukes of Hazard offered a fresh, bold vision of femininity, one that continues to inspire and resonate with audiences even today. Financial Controversies and Character Replacements The rousing success of The Dukes of Hazard was a testament to its captivating characters, thrilling storylines, and cultural resonance. However, beneath the veneer of on-screen camaraderie and southern charm, there lay a tumultuous saga of financial disputes and casting shakeups that threatened the very fabric of the show. At the zenith of its popularity, the Dukes of Hazard was not just a television sensation, it was a merchandising powerhouse. From lunchboxes and action figures to posters and apparel, the franchise's presence was ubiquitous. By 1981, during the series' fifth season, merchandising alone raked in a staggering $190 million for the studio. Yet, amidst this commercial windfall, a storm was brewing. John Schneider and Tom Wopat, who portrayed Bo and Luke Duke respectively, felt shortchanged. Despite the show's immense profitability, they had received a meager $25,000 each in royalties over the years. This disparity between the studio's earnings and the actor's compensation became a point of contention, leading to heightened tensions and eventual legal battles. Schneider and Wopat, recognizing their pivotal roles in the show's success, decided to take a stand. They initiated a lawsuit against Warner Brothers in 1982, seeking a fairer share of the profits. As negotiations became strained, the duo threatened to exit the series, a move that could potentially cripple the show. The studio, perhaps underestimating the actor's resolve or overestimating their own bargaining position, opted for a bold maneuver. Instead of immediately acquiescing to Schneider and Wopat's demands, CBS introduced two new characters, Coy and Vance Duke, portrayed by Byron Cherry and Christopher Mayer, respectively. These characters, presented as cousins of the original Duke brothers, were intended to fill the void left by Schneider and Wopat. However, the introduction of Coy and Vance was met with a vehement backlash from fans. The chemistry, charm, and familiarity of Bo and Luke Duke were irreplaceable. Audiences, deeply invested in the original characters, found it hard to warm up to these new entrants. Ratings, which had soared during the series' initial seasons, began to plummet. The magic of the show, it seemed, was intricately tied to its original cast, and any attempt to tinker with this formula was met with resistance. Recognizing the gravity of the situation and the potential long-term damage to the franchise, CBS was compelled to reconsider its stance. The network, in a bid to salvage the show's dwindling viewership, reached an agreement with Schneider and Wopat. The original Duke brothers were reinstated, and their financial grievances were addressed. Coy and Vance Duke, after a brief stint, faded into the annals of television history, becoming footnotes in the show's illustrious journey. The entire episode was a stark reminder of the delicate balance between commercial interests and artistic integrity. While studios and networks are driven by profitability, 
The emotional connection between characters and audiences is paramount. Any disruption to this bond can have cascading effects, not just on viewership but also on a show's legacy. In retrospect, the financial controversies and character replacements in The Dukes of Hazard offer valuable insights into the intricacies of television production. They underscore the importance of valuing talent, respecting audience sentiments, and recognizing that the soul of a show lies not just in its storyline, but in the characters that bring it to life. The return of Bo and Luke Duke was not just a victory for Schneider and Wopat. It was a testament to the power of audiences in shaping the trajectory of their beloved shows. Daisy Dukes, a national treasure. In the pantheon of American television, certain artifacts transcend their origins to become symbols of an era, emblematic of broader cultural shifts and trends. Among these, Daisy Duke's iconic shorts from The Dukes of Hazard hold a special place, not just as a fashion statement, but as a testament to the evolving nature of American entertainment and society. The significance of these shorts was cemented when they found a home at the Smithsonian Institution, a venerable establishment dedicated to the preservation of American history and culture. The decision to display Daisy's shorts alongside some of the most iconic artifacts in American history was a nod to their impact on popular culture. It was an acknowledgement that they were not just a piece of clothing, but a cultural artifact that captured the zeitgeist of a generation. In the hallowed halls of the Smithsonian, Daisy Duke's shorts were displayed alongside other iconic props from the world of entertainment. These included Indiana Jones's whip and hat, symbols of adventure and the relentless pursuit of knowledge, and Dorothy's ruby slippers from The Wizard of Oz, emblematic of the yearning for home and the magic of childhood wonder. The juxtaposition of Daisy's shorts with these artifacts was telling. While the whip represented daring and the slippers evoked nostalgia, the shorts symbolized a break from tradition, a move towards bold self-expression, and the redefinition of femininity in popular media. This recognition was not just about the shorts themselves, but about what they represented in the broader canvas of American cultural history. The late 1970s and early 1980s were periods of significant societal change. Traditional norms were being questioned boundaries were being pushed, and popular media, including television, was at the forefront of these shifts. In this milieu, Daisy Duke emerged as a character who, through her wardrobe choices, challenged established norms. Her shorts, while seemingly simple, were a bold statement, pushing the boundaries of on-screen attire and, by extension, societal expectations of how women should present themselves. The display of the shorts at the Smithsonian also highlighted the evolving nature of television as a medium. No longer was it just a source of passive entertainment. It was an influencer, a mirror to society, reflecting its aspirations, conflicts, and changes. Television shows and the characters within them had the power to shape societal discourse, influence fashion trends, and challenge stereotypes. Daisy Duke, with her fearless spirit and iconic shorts, was a manifestation of this power. In retrospect, the journey of the Daisy Dukes from the fictional Hazard County to the Smithsonian is a reflection of the symbiotic relationship between television and society. It underscores the idea that television, far from being a mere entertainer, is a chronicler of times, capturing the essence of eras, preserving them for posterity, and in the process, becoming an integral part of the cultural fabric. As the decades have passed, the significance of Daisy Duke's shorts has only grown. They are not just a reminder of a beloved television character or a fashion trend. They are a snapshot of a time when America was grappling with change, seeking to redefine itself and looking to its screens for inspiration, reflection, and direction. In the story of American television, the Daisy Dukes are not just a pair of shorts, they are a national treasure, symbolizing a moment, a movement, and a medium's unparalleled power to influence, inspire, and immortalize.